Welcome back. Um, so in our previous videos, we've been looking at what I would call independent events. All right. Um, so if I were to have two coins and I was going to flip both of them, the first coin came up a tail. If I were to flip the second coin, you have no idea whether it will come up a head or a tail. The first coin being a tail has no influence on the second coin. It could be a head or a tail with sort of a 50-50 chance, as you probably know, even though we haven't started probability yet. Um, so this is an independent event. The second flip is independent of the first flip. Anything could happen on the second flip, um, regardless of what happened on the first flip. So we were able to see using basic counting um, techniques that there are four different ways these coin tosses could occur, right? Then we moved into examples about dice. Okay, so most games involving dice have two of them. All right, so um, if I roll the first one, there are six possible things that could happen. In the second one, there are six possible things that could happen. And we learned that there were then 36 possibilities of the way um, we could roll these dice. Okay, so if I roll them, you know, the first one could be turn out to be a three. The second one could be any number. It could be a three, all right? The three hasn't been used up is the important thing. So the second die is independent of the first die, all right? Now we're gonna get later into um, something um, about ordering of things. Um, in the counting we've done so far, a six, then a three is very different than a three then a six, okay, we consider those two different things. A six, then a three is different than a three, then a six. So as we were counting, um, the, the order in which things occurred did matter, right? But what we're going to move into in this series of videos is more like a deck of cards, all right? So if I have a deck of cards here, Yellowstone cards, all right? Um, so if I have a deck of cards, Usually we don't replace what happened. So when I pull the first card off of here, you can see, uh, let me turn it just right. Okay, it's a 10 of diamonds, right? Usually when we're playing cards, the 10 of diamonds then is in someone's hand or it's in a discard pile, all right? It, it doesn't get used again right away, right? Until the entire deck has been used. Uh, we could put it back in the deck and then reshuffle the deck and hopefully you remember there are 52 possible cards we could draw um, the first time we turn over a card. This one happens to be the 10 of diamonds, um, but there were 51 other choices that could have come up with equal probability. Um, but if we, if we could reshuffle it into the deck and then there would be 52 more cards that could come up on the second um, choice. And then we could say, ah, there we, if we were only playing two cards, 52 times 52 would be the number of ways it could work out. But that's not true anymore. Once I pull the 10 of diamonds, we know, we don't know what the next card will be, but we do know for certain that it will not be a 10 of diamonds. So that influences how many events could happen or how many ways the second event could occur. Instead of having 52 possibilities, we're down to 51 possibilities. And then once we draw that card, Okay, we have the queen of spades here. Once we pull the queen of spades out, we know that the third card will neither be the 10 of diamonds nor the queen of spades. So we're down to 50 possible ways that the, second, the third card could be drawn. So let's look at this um, in a little more detail um, for a more limited deck, all right? If we were to have this deck of 52 cards, there's a lot of counting that has to take place. So we're going to go down to a deck of four cards. And rather than our playing cards, we're going to just have cards A, B, C, and D. And we're going to figure out the different, uh, how many different ways those could be dealt out. Okay, so here you see our, our fancy deck of four cards. Um, there are a couple things that will be important as we deal these cards out. All right, so we're gonna start for this series of videos. All right, the, the order matters. Okay, dealing A and B is different than dealing B 
than A, and so on. So A, B is considered one, com one um, possibility, I should say. You don't want to use the word combination. And B, A is considered a different possibility. So when order matters, this whole series is about permutations. We're dealing with permutations. When order doesn't matter, um, combinations will come in. And the other thing that's important is um, we do not replace the cards. Okay, so some problems when you start dealing with probability or counting, um, they will talk about drawing something out of a hat. They might be marbles. Um, you know, you might have red marbles and blue marbles, and you'll draw a marble and you'll mark down what you get, whether it's a red marble or a blue marble. And then if it's without replacement, if you drew a red marble, you would set it to the side before you draw the next marble. With replacement, you would throw the marble back in, shuffle them back up, and play again. Usually when we're playing games with cards, we do not replace um, elements that have been picked. Okay, so we're going to work with these two assumptions for right now, that order matters and we do not replace elements. If we're replacing them, it becomes um, like what we had yesterday. There would simply be four options every time you draw another card. All four would be present every single time. Um, so that is actually simpler. Um, so we've gone to a more complicated case. Um, and order matters. Um, we're going to look at that today. And then tomorrow, we'll look at what happens when order doesn't matter. Um, it's, they're pretty similar, but we do have to make a, a slight change, all right? So let's consider what could happen if we draw all four. Okay, so we don't need to diagram all of the possibilities. It's actually pretty extensive. Um, we know, let's see, on, let me just say on the first draw, we know that four different things could have happened. There are four outcomes. We could draw A, B, C, or D, all right? Hopefully it's fairly obvious that on the second draw, there are only three possibilities left. Once you have discarded a card, as we were talking about, you can't draw it again. So on the second draw, there are only three possibilities left. So using the counting principle, if we were to just draw two cards like this, um, we would expect that there would be four things that we could draw the first time, and three things that we could draw the second time. Um, and then if we were go to go to a third draw, there would only be two cards left. So we would say, ah, there would be two more ways to do that. And if we go to a fourth draw, well, now we're down to a single card. Um, so there's only one way the last card could be played. All right. So if we write out all of the possibilities of what could happen, um, we would end up with four times three times two times one. Now we're gonna see as we keep going, this has a special name. This is called four factorial. So that equals four times three times two times one. Um, so we're gonna get into bigger things like 52 factorial. If we had a whole deck of cards and you would not wanna write it out as 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 and so on, all the way down to two times one. Um, so mathematicians um, have come up with a shorter way of writing this when we're counting that way um, as four factorial or for a whole deck of cards, it might be 52 factorial. Um, so we're always coming up with new ways to write things um, more compactly. Instead of writing five plus five plus five plus five, we write that as four times five. And instead of writing five times five times five times five, we write that as five to the fourth power. So we're always coming up with compact ways of expressing longer things. Um, but once again, we're just counting. Um, so this is the way we would count if we were to pick all four of them. All right. Okay, now let's um, continue this logic, but let's not draw all four. Let's draw, whoops, that's my eraser. Let me get my pen out. Let's draw. Draw means to choose. Um, you take the top card off the deck. Draw three of the four. Okay, so the first draw uh, we could see um, is we're gonna have four options. I'll keep them in the same columns that we had before. We'd have four options. 
and then three options. And then on the third draw, we would have two options. So if we look at that, that would still look like it's, that's gonna be um, four times three times two. Now that's not quite four factorial because it's missing the one factorial, um, but one factorial is really just one. So I could rewrite this as four factorial over one factorial for reasons that aren't obvious quite yet, right? Let's consider it'll be more obvious why I might write it that way if I were to draw two of the four. So if I were to draw two cards out of the four, the first one could, there are four possibilities for the first one. Once I've drawn one card off though, there are only three possibilities left um, and we're finished. So what would the answer be? It would be four times three, right? Well, if I want to use factorials to express this, I could say that's four times three times two times one over two times one. Oh, so I could say that's four factorial over two factorial. Now this seems to be a long way um, if I just want to write four times three, um, it's much quicker to write four times three than it is to write four factorial over two factorial. But imagine that this was a, um, we're, you know, we're going to get to larger and larger decks. So if we have 52 cards, um, this exercise um, would show that writing it out in either of these forms might get very, very long. Um, and so the factorial notation is a more compact way of saying the same thing. Uh, so let's go all the way down to draw one of four. Well, if you're only going to pick one of those four cards, there are four ways that you could get that to happen. It could be A, B, C, or D. So this is simply equal to, uh, put it down here, Four. Now, how could I write that in terms of factorials? That's four times three times two times one over three times two times one, if I wanted to write it as factorials. So this would be four factorial over three factorial, if I were to only choose those, all right? Um, which leads to, in general, um, if we were to have n cards, and we draw four or choose R, so we have N things in the set and we choose R of them, um, we can see that the formula ends up becoming um, N factorial over, um, let's see, it would be N minus R factorial, all right? So in the first case, we had four cards and we drew all four, okay? So in case one, write this in red, n equals four and r equals one, therefore n minus r is equal to, um, that is gonna be three, okay? And so we have to write this as um, four factorial, over um, n, my, oh, I have a mistake in here. Let me pause and think this through. Uh, here's my mistake. Uh, we chose that r is, we're choosing all four. So r is four. So n minus r is not three, it's zero, right? Um, now this is a little bit crazy because our formula says we should take um, four factorial and divide by zero factorial. Okay, that seems to lead to a problem. We have division by zero, all right? Um, but mathematicians rescue us on this. Zero factorial is not actually zero for reasons I won't get into as we're working with zero factorial, it's one, okay? So we're going to take four factorial and divide by one. In the second case, n is equal to four and r is equal to three. So the quantity n minus r is one. So the answer was four factorial over one factorial, which is what we have here, all right? Um, in, the, in this case where we draw two of them, n equals four, r equals two. Um, so that means n minus r is two. 
So the answer has to be four factorial over two factorial. All right, and when you look at the last case, n equals four, r equals one, so therefore n minus r is three. So four factorial over three factorial. Now this is a complicated way to handle four cards, but as I said, this is gonna be very useful um, when we get to 52 cards. Let's say you were playing a game and you had 52 cards. And as you play around the hands, you know, maybe you have three players and each player gets five cards. So we might be dealing 15. Um, we draw 15 and the order might matter because it matters when players get their cards. So if you were to draw 15, um, who gets the cards depends on the order they're drawn. And um, also maybe it does matter in this game what you get for your first card, your second card and your third card. Um, maybe they're drawn over time as the game plays out. Um, so if you wanted to figure out the number of ways this could happen, um, there would be n would be 52, r is 15. So n minus r uh, is 37. So you could say that the number of ways this could work out is equal to 52 factorial over 37 factorial. And I think you can see why you wouldn't want to write this out longhand. All right, so we'll move on into another video that shows us how to um, compute these things quickly on our calculator because this becomes very tedious um, to do this by hand because the, the number of ways things can happen when you're dealing with decks of 52 cards is astronomically large. And so you don't want to compute these things by hand.